Hi everybody, my name is Laura West. I'm a registered nurse, a psychic medium, channeler, intuitive, <laughs> um, all those nice things. Uh, in this video, I wanted to sort of walk and talk with you guys um, through my, um, my spirit guide guide <laughs> that contains um, some of my tips on how to connect with your spirit guides. And these are all based on my experience that I've had um, and what's worked for me. So uh, I just feel it's my duty to share what I know has worked. Obviously, everybody is different, so you just want to, you know, take what works, take what doesn't, or leave what doesn't, and um, yeah, just experiment and have fun, because our spirit guides really do want to connect with us and, and meet us and, and, you know, remind us that we're not alone and that we're so very much loved. So, in this guide, I just wanted to, again, um, share with you from my voice <laughs> Uh, what's inside of it. Uh, so first of all, what is a spirit guide? So a spirit guide is a loving entity on the other side, also known as heaven um, or universe or, or any other sort of euphemism that you want to call it by. They have lived on earth. So because of this, they're able to empathize with whom they are guiding. This is what makes them different from angels because angels have never lived a life as a human. Everyone has at least one guide that acts as a main guide. Your main guide's purpose is to guide you and to communicate with you. This guide stays with you for this entire lifetime and has been with you for all previous lives too. Your main guide was assigned to you since the time you were created. Okay, so, how many spirit guides do I have? It is not uncommon to have more than one guide. In fact, most people have several spirit guides working with them. Guides, excluding your main one, will come and go in your life depending on your current circumstances. So for example, if you have a career, you would have a guide to help you with your profession. If you have taken up a hobby, you would have a guide to help you with that hobby. They're, they are there with you, ready and willing. So, how can you meet your guides? There are different ways that people can meet their spirit guides. I will share with you the two ways where I have met mine. All right, so way number one is through dreams. So an effective way to meet your guides is through your dreams. The process is rather simple before falling asleep, and as you were laying in bed, just ask either silently or out loud for one or all of your spirit guides to meet you in your dreams. So be prepared that you may not meet them that night. It could take up to a week or two for them to come through in your dreams. The time that they do decide to visit you is divinely planned, so it is very important to stay patient. For me, I did this. I asked to meet my spirit guide in my dream and it probably happened about two weeks later um, that I was able to meet mine. So how will I know that it is my spirit guide in my dream? So that's another question. When you dream about a heavenly entity or spirit, you will know that it was a visitation versus a regular dream. So this dream will seem incredibly real. If you wake up feeling like you just spent time with your spirit guide, then you can rest assured that you experienced a visitation. Also, the interaction will be extraordinarily vivid and clear with the being. This could be because of a significant conversation that may have occurred, or just an inner knowing that you were visited by someone from the other side. The final reason for how you will know that what you just experienced was a visitation is based on your memory of it. So if you seem to recall detailed memories of the visitation, then you know it happened. You will likely be able to remember these key points for years to come. Okay, so method number two to meet your spirit guides is through meditation. 
So another effective way to meet your spirit guides is through meditation because meditation helps quiet the mind. A quieted mind helps you open up to receive messages from the other side. This includes messages from your spirit guides. When our minds are overloaded with thoughts, it is very difficult for our guides to communicate through and around them. So in other words, meditation creates an open channel for our guides to communicate through. For this method to be better effective, it can be helpful to have established a rather routine meditative practice. There are many great free apps such as Calm, Insight Timer, and Headspace out there to help you get started if you are new to meditation. Okay, so some tips. So you wanna find a place that is quiet and free from distractions and where you are able to sit comfortably. You can choose to sit on either a, um, a chair or a floor cushion. If you're not using a meditation app, playing some relaxing music can be helpful. Some people will even listen to white noise to help drown out any outside sounds. The purpose of meditation is to bring one's awareness to the present. Therefore, once you find a comfortable place to sit, close your eyes and comfortably rest your arms at your side or on your lap. So at this point, you want to start focusing on your breathing. So this means keeping your focus on your inhale and your exhale. The other goal is to keep yourself from thinking about anything else other than your breathing. And no, that is not something easily done, but that's why it's called a practice. So just give yourself some patience, some grace, and know that part of meditation is learning how to focus only on your breathing and to quiet all the noise, um, extra noise that's going on in your head. So remember, practice makes perfect. Meditation is, is known as a practice for a reason. This is because it takes practice, time, and patience to learn to quiet the mind. Soon, you should start to see the benefits when you do this for about three to 10 minutes nearly every day. Once you start to feel comfortable with meditation, you can then start to set the intention to meet your guides. When you're ready, you will go into your meditation as you normally do. Then wait until the information comes to you. It's important to remember that when it's from your guides, it will come to you effortlessly. Once a connection has been made, you can start to ask them any questions that you see fit. Their answers will be based off of the high vibrational energy of love, and they consider alignment with your soul's higher purpose. With regular meditation, you may start to receive downloads of information from your guides. You may also start to form a stronger communicative relationship with them outside of meditation. And you may start to learn when signs come from your guides as they continue to work to communicate and guide you in life. This information can come to you in the form of a vision, a knowing, a sound, a voice, a smell, or a feeling, just to name a few. So the biggest takeaway when it comes to our spirit guides is knowing that you were never alone and that you were so loved. Even before you knew you had spirit guides, know that they have always been working with you and for you from the other side. They make up an entire team of beings who are there to support you in this lifetime. So remember, the biggest takeaway is that our guides want us all to know that we are never alone and that we are so very much loved. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that some of these tips and tricks um, can work for you. Uh, you know, please don't be afraid to share with me. Um, feel free to, to share if you've had your own experiences, if you've tried these techniques and they have worked, uh, or if you have any further questions, I'm always open to discussion and um, hearing how it goes with your own spirit team. So, um, I look forward to hearing, hearing from you guys and um, have fun meeting, meeting your team. Bye.